Okay, everybody, we're going to get into one of the exciting topics in AP Calculus, and that's infinite series. <clears throat> a series is nothing more than the sum of a sequence. It's easy to get the two uh, terms conflated with one another, um, but a series is addition, and a sequence is just a list. All right, well, let's take a look here. We're going to be talking not just about a finite series, but infinite series, because that's what we're, we're all about in calculus. So we want to talk about an infinite series. Here's an example of a classic infinite series. <clears throat> one half plus one quarter, or sorry, one half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus a thirty-second. So we're, uh, uh, every one of these is a two to a power, okay? And this infinite series actually, if I sum it infinitely, will actually end up equaling one. And there's a graphical representation of that right here. If I have a square and I divide it in half, and I divide that in, uh, in half, and I divide that in half, you can see that we have this pattern, this cascading pattern that heads up to the upper uh, right corner or wherever you draw it. And you can see that if I keep on chopping up again and again and again and again, all I'm doing is basically finding a way to uh, chop up the square, which has a uh, um, length and a width of one. Okay, so, so there's a visual representation of an infinite series, so adding things infinitely, but where the sum actually exists um, and is a finite value. Another classic uh, 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 series, the harmonic series or, or sequence, um, that actually doesn't add up to anything at all. That actually goes off to infinity. These fractions I'm adding are smaller and smaller, but it turns out that they're not getting smaller fast enough for us to go to a finite number. So this is infinity. Um, so we have a, 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 a well-defined convergent series, a not so, a well-defined but non-convergent series. And, and, and then down here we have a series that's well-defined, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, but this infinite sum, it's hard to know where it goes, right? I have infinitely many 1s, I have infinitely many negative 1s, um, but at least in this order when I add them up, it oscillates between, uh, um, the way I've drawn it, between 0 and 1, okay? So that's the idea, um, some infinite series to think about. All right, let's go ahead and let's look at some... Um, Some definitions. So an infinite series, what is it? An infinite series is an expression of the form <coughs> a1 plus a2 all the way up to an and beyond. Or we can write it like this with a infinity at the upper limit here of the sum. So the index k runs from 1, let's see it starts at 1, and bumps up by 1 every single time to 2, to 3, to 4, and so on, and goes up to infinity. Okay. Um, a1, a2 are terms of the series, and a sub n an arbitrary uh, term in the series is the nth term of the series. <clears throat> now, one thing that's important to recognize here is that, um, strictly speaking, we can only define addition as the, the sum of two numbers, right? I can't talk about addition as the sum of three numbers. When I do that, I'm actually using the associative property and saying that I can do the first two and then add another and then add another. So the infinite series um, requires a uh, a new definition to make it work, really. We're using the concept of the original binary operation, but now we're making it go infinitely. Okay, so we, we step by step by step add one number, but we do it infinitely many times. So that just means that we want to make sure we redefine this um, as something new, an infinite sum. Okay, we have this infinite sum, okay, and we want to talk about uh, a sum that exists. Okay, we want to figure out what does it mean and how do we define a sum that goes to a particular value. The way we do this is with something called partial sums. Okay, so the partial sum um, is it are parts of a sum that form a sequence. So the first partial sum would be the first term. The second partial sum is the sum of the first two terms. The third partial sum is the sum of the first three terms, and so on. And so what I do here is I create a sequence, S1, S2, and these are going to be values, all the way up to Sn, which is the sum of the first n terms, and, and, and so on. So, <clears throat> what's important about this? Well, I have now a sequence of numbers, okay, that are, a, uh, that are ideally going towards something. So now I'm going to use what I know about the limits of sequences to approach how we talk about a convergent series. So, here's the theorem part of that. If the limit of the sequence of partial sums converges to a real number, because we can figure out limits of sequences, 
then we say the sum converges to capital S, and we write it like this. <clears throat> a sub 1 all the way to A sub n can be written as, using the summation notation, the sigma notation, and that's going to be equal to S. So I can actually now say that the sum equals a value if the limit of the sequence of the partial sums approaches a value. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> this is a uh, infinite series. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to look at what this appears like as a sequence of partial sums. So the first term here, the first partial sum is 3 tenths or 0.3. The second partial sum, so this is S sub 1. S sub 2 is the sum of the first two. This is 0.3 plus 0 0.03, so that's 0.33. The first, sum of the first three terms is 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003, so 0.333. The next term you can see is going to be 0 0.3333. 3. And the question is, where is this going? Well. We can see this is going to 0.3 with the bar over it, right? Infinitely many threes after the decimal. Okay. Now we actually know this uh, already. We haven't proved anything, but we know it in intuitively at this point. We've used it a lot that this is equal to a third. So this particular infinite series converges to a third because this sequence of terms converges to 0 0.333333, which we know is a third. So we're using this idea of uh, sums forming a sequence to then show that approaches a value. And this, so this series converges to a third. All right, keep moving. <clears throat> so now we're gonna use a really nice theorem. That, that this is one you're gonna have to know. It seems a little bit silly, but let's look at it. So if the infinite series converges then the limit of the sequence of terms equals zero. Well, what does that mean? That means that the sequence, that is when I don't add them up, the sequence is tending towards zero, meaning the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller towards zero. So that as I add them together, okay, as I add them together, they're not necessarily getting bigger and bigger and bigger. right? If the sequence were tending towards something other than zero, then I would be adding a lot every single time I added another term. That's the idea here. So, what th really important thing to notice here is that this only goes one direction. If the sum converges, the limit of the sequence goes to zero. This does not say anything about the other direction. If I know the sequence tends towards zero, it does not mean that the, se uh, that the uh, series uh, has a convergent sum. Okay, we usually use this, I this theorem in the converse to show that something doesn't converge. So let's take a look. <clears throat> Does the following series converge? Now, we don't have any knowledge so far how to find the, the uh, value of this series. All I want to know now is, does it converge or does it not? Well, if I take the converse of this statement, okay, if A then B, the converse is not B, not B, pardon me, implies not A. So, um, if the series con uh, converges, then the limit is zero. So I'm saying if the limit is not zero, then the limit series does not converge. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate or try to investigate this limit, the limit of the sequence now, not of the series. Okay. And you'll notice here the sequence here converges to a half. So the sequence is convergent, but it does not converge to zero, meaning the series, whatever it does, cannot converge. So this does not converge. And that's because the series does not tend, sorry, the sequence does not tend towards zero. Okay? So we're just we're today we're really just trying to come up with some statements about series in general. The final thing we're going to look at here <clears throat> is the geometric series, which is something you've seen before. The geometric series says that if I start with a number, and I multiply by some common number over and over again, the common ratio, a, and then a times r, and then times a, a times r again, so r squared, and then a times r squared again times r, r cubed. So I'm, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these up infinitely, all the way to infinity. So I can write it like this as a list, okay? Or I can write it like this, n from 1 to infinity of a, r to the n minus 1. Now we're using the n minus 1 and 0 so that our first term is a, my second term is AR, okay? 
There's lots of ways to write this, but I want to make sure that my first term is the number a, by our definition, and the second term is a times the common ratio. Okay, we know that this will converge to the sum, and we actually know the sum, the first term divided by 1 minus r. So if I add this up infinitely, I get this. We'll talk about a proof of that later. That's going to be true as long as r in absolute value is less than 1. It's going to diverge in any other case. If r is equal to 1, then the sum becomes too big. And if r is bigger than 1, then it certainly becomes too big. We call this radius the interval of convergence. That's to say that this series will converge as long as r falls between negative 1 and 1. All right, let's take a look at an example here of how to use the geometric series. <clears throat> so for each of these, do the following series converge? And if so, what do they converge to? Let's take, it the first, take a look at the first one. Well, I have 3 times 1 half to the n minus 1. Okay, well, let's take a look what this looks like. This is set up just like my previous formula, so it should be pretty straightforward to apply. Um, I have a times r to the n minus 1, and n runs from 1 to infinity, meaning that this, uh, this will converge as long as r is in absolute value less than 1. 1 half is less than 1, so this will converge to 3 over 1 minus r, or 6. Okay. The second one, we have an alternating series now, 1 minus a half plus a quarter minus a half, eighth, and so on. The nth term looks like this. Okay, that means an arbitrary term is negative one half raised to a power. So the first one is negative one half raised to the zero, then negative one half raised to the one, then negative one half raised to the two, and so on. Okay, so r here is in absolute value less than one, meaning this will converge. It's going to converge to the first term, which is one, divided by one minus the common ratio, which is negative a half. This, this is three halves, this will uh, go to two-thirds, right? Okay, this third one here. This, notice the index is running from zero to infinity now. So just kind of have to think about how do we apply the theorem that we had before to this. So we're running from zero to infinity. Um, we have r. r is definitely less than one in absolute value, so this should converge. The first term will be one, because anything to the zeroth power is one. The second term will be three-fifths. The third term will be three fifths squared, and so on. Or I should really say the zeroth term, the first term, the second term, and so on. Notice there are many ways to write the same series. This one, with the, uh, the author decided to start with the number index at zero, but he could have charged, so decided to start at two. It wouldn't have mattered as long as the formula here respected that change. So r is less than one in absolute value, meaning this will converge to the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is 3 fifths. So that's going to be 2 thirds on the bottom. That should be 5 over 2. Finally, the last one. Okay, As long as this can, uh, the common ratio is less than 1 in absolute value, this should converge. Um, this isn't written as a geometric series because it's hard to see what r is. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to rewrite this. The first term is going to be pi over 2. The second term will be pi over 2 squared. The third term will be pi over, oh, not 8, but pi over 2 cubed, and so on, making the, the common ratio r pi over 2. Now, as long as <clears throat> the ratio in absolute value is less than 1, this should converge to the first term divided by 1 minus r. But pi is a little bigger than 3, making this number bigger than 1. So we know that this does not converge. OK, that's enough for today. Uh, we bit off a lot here, and we'll try chewing it in the next couple of days. Thanks so much.